Let's look at the effect of violations of the normality assumption on inference procedures for the ratio of variances. How robust are these procedures? How well do they work when the normality assumption is violated? It turns out that they are very sensitive to violations of normality and work very poorly when the normality assumption is violated. And we'll take a closer look at that notion in this video. Recall that if we are sampling from normally distributed populations, then a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for the ratio of population variances is given by this interval. If we are sampling from normally distributed populations, then this method works perfectly, in the sense that the true coverage probability of the interval method will be exactly equal to the stated coverage probability. In other words, the true confidence level will be the same as the stated confidence level. When constructing a confidence interval for the ratio of population variances using these methods, what are the consequences if the normality assumption is violated? The quick answer to that question is that the true confidence level will be different from the stated confidence level. Our stated confidence level may be very misleading. To illustrate that, I'm going to run simulations where we are sampling from four different distributions. These four distributions given in blue. In the first case, we'll be sampling from the normal distribution, so the normality assumption will be true in reality. In the other three cases, we'll be dealing with different violations of the normality assumption. One distribution is the uniform distribution, given here in blue. The superimposed green curve is a normal curve with the same mean and variance. Here we'll be sampling from a T distribution with 5 degrees of freedom. And we'll also try sampling from the exponential distribution. In this simulation, I'm going to draw 100,000 pairs of samples from each of those four different distribution shapes for various sample sizes. And for each pair of samples, I'm going to calculate a 95% confidence interval for the ratio of population variances. Then we'll look at the question, what percentage of intervals actually contains the ratio of population variances? If the percentage is close to 95%, the procedure works well in that scenario. If the percentage is far different from 95%, the procedure is not working well, and our reported results may be misleading under that type of scenario. I've chosen a 95% confidence level because that's our most common choice of confidence level. The overall results would be very similar for any confidence level. I'm going to look only at situations in which both populations have the same shape and the sample sizes are equal. N1 and N2 will both equal 5, 20, or 100. First, we'll be sampling from normal distributions, so the normality assumption is true. And we can see that, regardless of the sample sizes, the percentages in the blue column of the table are all very close to 95%. Theoretically, the procedures are working perfectly here, and the percentages in this column are equal to exactly 95%. But we're dealing with the results of a simulation of 100,000 intervals, so there is some chance and variability involved. Now let's see what happens for a few violations of the normality assumption. Here we're sampling from the distribution in blue, which is a uniform distribution. And we can see here that the percentages are actually greater than 95%. For a sample size of 5, 97.4% of the intervals captured the ratio of population variances. And that percentage goes up for larger sample sizes. We'd be stating a 95% confidence level, but the true coverage probability of the interval method would actually be quite a bit higher. What's happening here? We're sampling from this distribution in blue, which has a flatter peak and lighter tails compared to the green curve, which is a normal distribution with the same mean and variance. And because of this, we say that the uniform distribution has a lower kurtosis than the normal distribution. And in situations like this, for distributions that have lower kurtosis, using methods based on the normal distribution will overestimate the variability of the sampling distribution of the ratio of sample variances. The resulting confidence intervals will tend to be too wide, 
and result in coverage probabilities that are higher than the stated 95%. But it's even more problematic if a distribution has greater kurtosis than the normal distribution. So let's take a look at that. Here we are sampling from populations that have this blue distribution, which is a T distribution with 5 degrees of freedom. And the green curve represents a normal curve with the same mean and variance. This distribution in blue has a sharper peak and heavier tails compared to the normal distribution. So we say that it has greater kurtosis than the normal distribution. It's a little hard to see the heavier tails of the blue distribution, but it does have more area out in the tails. And we can see here that the estimated coverage probability of what we are stating to be a 95% confidence interval is about 91% for a sample size of 5, and it actually gets much worse as the sample sizes increase. For other distributions with even greater kurtosis, the coverage probabilities are even worse. A main reason for this is that for distributions with greater kurtosis than the normal distribution, methods based on the normal distribution will tend to underestimate the variability of the sampling distribution of the ratio of sample variances. The resulting intervals will tend to be too narrow, and the coverage probabilities will be less than the stated 95% and sometimes much less. Let's look at one more distribution, the exponential distribution. For this exponential distribution, we see that the estimated coverage probabilities are much less than the stated 95%. It starts out around 82.6% for sample sizes of 5, and again gets worse as those sample sizes increase. The exponential distribution has a sharper peak and more area far out in the tail compared to the normal distribution. It's a little tricky to compare the kurtosis of a skewed distribution like the exponential to that of a symmetric distribution like the normal. But sampling from the exponential distribution does result in more extreme values of the ratio of sample variances. And so here again, methods based on the normal distribution will tend to underestimate the variability in the sampling distribution of the ratio of sample variances. The resulting intervals will tend to be too narrow, and the coverage probabilities will be much less than the stated value of 95%. Let's look at two important points from the simulations. Inference procedures for the ratio of population variances perform very poorly when the normality assumption is violated. For distributions that have high kurtosis, the coverage probabilities can be much less than the stated confidence level. Our reported results for these procedures can be very misleading. Recall that in two sample inference procedures for means, violations of the normality assumption became less problematic as the sample sizes increased. But that is not the case in inference procedures for variances. In inference procedures for the ratio of variances, violations of the normality assumption are just as problematic for large sample sizes. In fact, the coverage probabilities get worse for large sample sizes. They get farther from the stated value. Here I've looked at the effects of a few violations of the normality assumption on confidence intervals for the ratio of variances. But violations of the normality assumption have just as bad of an effect on hypothesis tests for variances. In f-tests for the equality of variances that assume normality, if the normality assumption is violated, the true significance level of the test can be very different from the stated significance level. Since these inference procedures for variances perform so poorly for violations of the normality assumption, and large sample sizes don't help, one should be very cautious when drawing conclusions from these procedures.